Um, you can start by reading the how to love God, and then you can pray from there. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. How to love God? To love God in the most practical way is to love our own fellow beings. If we feel for others in the same way as we feel for our dear ones, we love God. If instead of seeing faults in others, we look within ourselves, we are loving God. If instead of robbing others to help ourselves, we rob ourselves to help others, we are loving God. If we suffer in the suffering of others and feel happy in the happiness of others, we are loving God. If instead of worrying over our own misfortunes, we think of ourselves more fortunate than many, many others, we are loving God. If we endure our lot with patience and contentment, accepting it as his will, we are loving God. If we understand and feel that the greatest act of devotion and worship to God is not to hurt or harm any of his beings, we are loving God. To love God as he ought to be loved, we must live for God and die for God. Knowing that the goal of all life is to love God and find Him as our own self. Avatar Meher Baba Ki Jai. Thank you, Avatar Meher Baba Ki Jai. So, our, more, our innermost loving selves. And let's, it, on that note, start from where we left yesterday. So, we have finished up to the physical page 40. We finished the Greek journey, the, I mean, the Iliad and Odyssey a little bit. Uh, I mean, the references to those stanzas, and uh, you can catch up to that on the video. Then um, he starts with uh, the musts. So he starts with uh, how uh, the Mandali was tasked with finding these musts, and then actually covers a little bit of detail about some of the musts, and that's where we are right now. So I was just trying to see if there is an online reference for all the musts that Baba has made contact with. And unfortunately, I don't think there is a singular source. Of course, I'm sure uh, we can go to Lord Meher and then uh, do a string search and be able to pick up all the reference to all the musts. But Hyderabad has done something interesting which I wanted to share. So here's Baba's must contacts in Hyderabad, right? So uh, what they have done is actually alphabet alphabetically put all the uh, musts that Baba has met. And surprise, surprise, there's 60 of them, or rather 56 of them, oh. right from, um, if you go by date of contact, it's from 1938 to... Uh, 1945, and it, these are these these are also with their names and some uh, uh, links about uh, I mean some description of what uh, that contact and contact was about and what that must used to do. So that's interesting. So that's a to do. That's a good to do for the Baba world. Getting a list of musts. There's no nobody in the history of uh, uh, you know, no avatar, no spiritual master who has defined and worked with God intoxicated souls, at least that I am aware of. Uh, nobody mentions this category. And Baba is the one that has mentioned this category and made it his uh, life task to work with them. He has done a lot of work with them uh, over the years. And uh, yeah, I think. It might be a good project to uh, create a listing and create a compendium of what happened with those musts. But that's a maybe Wayfarer we has any. Yeah, Wayfarer is a good uh, list, but that's Donkin's view and what he saw alone. And okay. it does not have even the 50 that we see on this page. So I'm very oh, intrigued. Okay. So I, if I remember correctly, Wayfarer has about 
a few tens or twenties of months who are covered in that. Whereas uh, this is pretty comprehensive. And I think in, in, in the 30s and 40s, Baba traveled extensively and everywhere there was a must element, right? So every town used to say, go get me a must. So, yes, yes. yeah, so that's interesting. Okay, so let's uh, continue with our... Uh, 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 in fact, what you missed yesterday was an interesting conversation about how uh, are there any uh, must references outside of India? Strangely, we were not able to find it. So most of the musts were found in India, whereas agents, chargemen, archangels, uh, uh, we find references that Baba has mentioned uh, he met or he made contact outside of uh, India. But must specifically, uh, nobody has, uh, I mean, we have not encountered. So there's a aspirant must. I mentioned the name and Sunil jumped in. So most likely that's another indication that he really is half must or getting there. <laughs> Jai Baba, Jai Baba. <laughs> I was just briefing <laughs> Baba Ji <laughs> about yesterday. <laughs> yeah, okay. So. Yes. Let's continue with our uh, journey. So, page 41 on the physical book. Um, Karim Baba, Avtar Mahe Baba Ki Jai. Karim Baba was a son man of a saint and charge man of Calcutta. Baba first contacted him on a pavement where he had sat in filth and sun and rain for six years. Surrounded by assorted debris, his throat entwined with tangled skin of fine wire and bangles and anklets of rag on his arms and ankles. Such was the glory that shone from his face and eyes, that world encrusted men were moved to repentance and love by sight of him. Glory, unbelievable. So, this is Karim Baba of Calcutta. Uh, maybe we will this one word what this evening. The skin is length of thread or yarn. So let's go back and read that line. His throat entwined with tangled skin of fine wire, so length of wire, and bangles and anklets of rag on his arms and ankles. Such was the glory that shone from his face and eyes that world encrusted men were moved to repentance and love by sight of him. Glory unbelievable. Unknown to the few rich whose special activity in Calcutta, as in New York or Sydney or any other erect and spread mass of concrete, is cultivation of ignorance of values, he was held in great reverence and esteemed by the poor and middle classes. So ignore the bracket. I'll just read the line without the bracket. That is very simple. Unknown to the few rich, he was held in great reverence and esteem by the poor and middle classes. And then now let's go to the brackets. Whose special activity in Calcutta, that is the rich, as in New York or Sydney or any other erect and spread mass of concrete, is cultivation of ignorance of values. So he's chastising the rich, right? And he's uh, classifying the modern cities as erect and spread mass of concrete. So he uh, classifies Calcutta, New York and Sydney together. And then he says, all they do, the rich, all they do is cultivation of ignorance of values, right? So this is again the poverty theme that we saw above and how it comes continues here, right? Okay, we continue. Whether they knew or not, he held their welfare continuously in his heart, something of the dignity and authority of his office was apparent to them. Baba contacted him four or five times, 
fed him and gave him cigarettes. So Baba made four or five contacts with uh, Kareem Baba. A few weeks later, a disciple was sent to bring Kareem Baba to Ranchi. 200 miles northwest where Baba had established an ashram. At the disciples' suggestion that he come away with him, the saint gave a short laugh and returned back into himself. His soul came forward for the moment of his laugh and returned to its contemplation of God. It came down to the plains in one moment and returned to its Circling of Manas Sarovar, the disciple retired, brought new clothes, posted a cab handy, and again approached him and asked him to stand up and allow him to replace his old clothes with new ones. To his astonishment, the saints stood up and one by one, working carefully and quickly, he stripped off his rags and redressed him. By now, a small crowd had gathered, amazed to see their beloved saint be undressed and redressed by a stranger. More amazed still when he began to follow the stranger to a waiting cab. So we see the episode of uh, Karim Baba probably moving uh, or listening to the Mandali member and uh, joining him back. What's interesting is he again brings the element of uh, the Himalayas and uh, Manasarova and uh, 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 the Kailash, Mount Kailash, right? So he, he says that his contemplation of God was continuous, but his soul came forward the moment of his laugh and returned back to the contemplation of God. He's referring to Karim Baba here. So to compare that, he says, it, the soul, came down to the plains in one moment and returned to its circling. So being with God is like circling around Manasarova. Right? So that's what he's comparing here. Let's continue to see what happens after the cap. The disciple prayed that their docile amazement might not turn to belligerent interference at his saint taking away. So he was scared of the crowd around because he's doing something that could annoy them. He's taking the saint away. Next was to intrude into the sun emblazoned consciousness, the idea and the approval of getting its body into the cab. The body sat down on the running board. The soul continued its circling flight of self contemplation in the mirror lake. The disciple waited eternity's whim. Gradually, the great bulk hauled itself into the cab and sat on the floor. So Karim Baba was quite something. He, 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 did, uh, he did not uh, cooperate easily, but finally he gets into the cab. Again, he brings in Manasarovar. I think he uses the word mirror lake to represent that. The soul continued its circling flight of self-contemplation in the mirror lake. So again, uh, going back to the Madzubiyat, going back to the God state, the God intoxication state, even as he's sitting on the running board of the car, waiting to decide whether to get into the cab, and then finally he gets into the cab. So that's what's being talked here. Springing in, he ordered the driver to drive fast to the station where he got Karim Baba, into a small third class apartment. Up to now, the great must had not uttered a word, but when the train leaving was due, he said tersely, the ticket is taken and the train is leaving. Which meant, I am going to that one who will set me on the last stage of my journey to the goal. And so was fulfilled a saying of Baba, that one day he would have two sixth plane saints living with him. So one of them is Karim Baba. Any guesses on who the second is? Baba, question for you. So there is a saying of Baba that he would have two sixth plane saints living with him. 
One of them is Karin Baba. Who's the other? Uh, I'll have to think about it. Let's see. Come back with uh, yeah, something that pops up or do, do a quick uh, search and check on that. Anyway, I'll continue. And others of these lovely moon children and sun children of God, gods and goddess among men, breastplated and shielded with silence and withdrawal in clear purpose, who flinched not from the spear of calamity as it hurtled towards them, but like Automedon gazed steadily at it, keeping it in their sight and skillfully avoiding it and answering with keen blows, for whom Baba suffered endless travail. I'll read this line again. So he's talking about the, the common people. And others of these lovely moon children and sun children of God, gods and goddess among men, breastplated and shielded, that is protected, with silence and withdrawal in clear purpose, who flinched not from the spear of calamity. So as a calamity comes to them, they are not flinching from it. From the spear of calamity as it hurtled towards them, but like Automedon, gazed steadily at it, keeping it in their sight. They're keeping the spear of calamity in their sight and skillfully avoiding it and answering with keen blows. We'll just look up what uh, Automedon is, uh, most likely Greek, but we can. Yes. The uh, Greek mythology, son of Diorus was Achilles Carrier. So this is basically the first book, Iliad, who drove the immortal horses, Bayless. And so, so the reference to Automedon is uh, gazed steadily at it, and probably he was known for his concentration and uh, uh, skills in charioteering. So Achilles was the greatest warrior known to mankind at that time and uh, uh, the, the charioteer better be good so charioteer of uh, of this of achilles was atomedon right so now he talks about for whom baba suffered endless travail and i continue there was muhammad singer with voice of sweet thunder which melted hearts when he sang of Baba and his rescue of souls from the terrible ocean. And Fulwala, who used to weave garlands of flowers and adorn himself, and who Baba said, with one slap could knock you up onto the sixth plane. And Pullukolla Baba, king of all musts, aged 120 years, whose reputation was very great because he crossed rivers unaided. And Shahabuddin Baba, who had not suffered injury when a farmer drove a bullock cart over him. And Pir Fazel Shah, adept pilgrim, also aged 117, believed, 117 believed, but hail, who greeted Baba and his men with great reverence, offering the master a special seat and saying, No one before you came has so pierced my heart with divine love. No one knows your greatness. If I were to die tonight, I would take another body immediately to be near you. And Moti Baba, other than he before mentioned, also adept pilgrim, revered by harness, and Lakhan Shah wrapped in his divine dream. And Nabab Ali Shah, who said, to a disciple, there is a place I would go, but the road is closed. But I will ask permission of the silent one, and if he gives it, I will go. And because he knew the disciple came from Baba, gave him presence. And Kadir Sahib, sometimes master, sometimes drowned. And Nasiban Mastani, Mastani Gitana, by a bridge, old and adept pilgrim and Mastani Mai with the eyes of a Veena, 
who looked adoringly at Baba and said, Allah. And Malvi Sahib Mastan, who was a chargeman of Madras, and Wali Ji, who was ordered to let loose Godavari's flood at Nasik, and did so. And Kadir, probably Mia, and Kadir Mia, who also wields God's powers and loves tea, two bucketfuls a session, and Maulana Shamsuddin Ulema, who exclaimed, In the darkness of light, I see the light of God. And Gange Maharaj, who brought the living Vitoba to Pandarpur and assembled 70,000 people by the river in the moonlight. And they spent the night singing the praises of the living God. These are some of the names of the lovely ones of God. But lovelier men, even then, they are the disciples who have given themselves utterly to him and journey with him his journeys of work and love. They are the hands and feet and speech of the sun and moon and beyond of him. For 10 years of Sundays and moon months, they worked in this work of the divine sun and moon and beyond of Baba. But it was his grace that they succeeded in their work. So, it was all multiple uh, musts. Uh, there's a listing that ends this section. So these lines indicate uh, end of a section within a part. So we are ending a section with the reference to the uh, multiple musts. And surprised, Gargay Maharaj is also categorized as a must, but so yes, he, just... was, uh, he was known as a master. He had some characteristics. Uh, uh, okay. He's the one in the Sahvas videos, right? In the front, sitting in the front. Yes, yes, yes. And yeah, many yeah. photographs are there. Many photographs are with him. Yes, yeah. So I was just showing uh, for those of you who came late. I was just showing this interesting list. So we were, we were uh, uh, wondering if there is a list of all musts that Baba has ever established contact with. And sadly, I couldn't find something on Google. But interestingly, I hit upon this list. So there is a list of Baba's must contacts only in Hyderabad. And there's 56 of them. There's 56 of uh, uh, different uh, see, so these are the names we already saw. Mai Mastan, right? The lady that had uh, Bina eyes, right? And then maybe that Pulla Pulla is again a Telugu sounding thing. So, no, it's not here. Anyway, so I think this is, yeah, Kadir Mia, we, we saw that. Kadir Mia, that happened in 1945, 23rd of February. So, yeah, this is one reference that I found, uh, but there is no full list. Uh, obviously, the definitive detailed source could be Wayfarers, but again, it's not exhaustive. Right? It does not have all the references uh, to all masks. So that's a good project for oh, Shiva, someone. I, I, hello, I think yeah, go ahead. <laughs> if I understood, if I understood your question right, you were asking about the list of all the must contacts, right? Um, uh, basically, uh, I think the Wayfarers has the most exhaustive list. I think there was there were two parts, part one and part two, which was compiled oh. later, and I think it's on the online edition. Oh, okay. So I didn't know of uh, two volumes, so probably I didn't notice what I was reading. I read the physical book and. Uh, I did not recollect that there were like so many. Um, I mean, I remember tens or twenties of chronicles of mass, but then obviously there have been much many more. So yeah, I think Wayfarers could be the list. Whether it's exhaustive or not is what we were debating. But uh, considering there are two volumes, probably right. No, with the Wayfarers, are two three parts. You know, one is the introduction about mass. The second is the 
the important must wow. that Baba worked with. And then the third section basically lists all the must contacts. That's my understanding. Oh. Okay, well. Awesome. Okay, thank you. That's useful. Let me look that up. So, any thoughts before we finish uh, this section and go to the next? Anybody? Oh, uh, so, the must contact and what Baba did with them is uh, uh, shrouded in uh, all secrecy. So, what was actually happening, we never came to know. I think we never will come to know. So, except that uh, he was helping them cross the plains and uh, go ahead. Otherwise, he was working with them for the benefit of the universe. So, what sort of, uh, uh, say, the actual work that they were doing, uh, nowhere uh, it is referred to, or I am not aware of it. But, uh, say Baba. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I agree with what you said. I don't think there's more clarity than what you already said, which is move them in their journey and use them to continue the universal work. These are the two things that you hear. And as you said, it was shrouded in secrecy, or at least many of the must contacts were, uh, I mean, they were made publicly, but then he also sent, spent a lot of time with them in seclusion. So, yes, it will remain. Uh, mysterious, enigmatic, whatever. So it, uh, it, it probably will never see the light of day till Sunil tells us more as he gets closer to full masthood. <laughs> I am already full must. Oh, oh sorry, then tell us about it. <laughs> These are Thank spiritual you. secrets, <laughs> not <laughs> ordinary, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hey, okay. Don't make us feel worse, but <laughs> to hear you. <laughs> okay, so let's get with you. We go to the next section. So the other thing that I noticed, I like that expression. So he's using adept telegram to refer to bus or people on the path. So. Uh, uh, multiple times he uses that expression. That's very beautiful. Adept pilgrim. So um, that's something I took away. Yeah. Okay. So let's uh, go to the next section. Sunday and moon month time, our master and the master's slave had now crept in decrepitude, decrepitude at his blessed feet honoring him for 28 years since the establishment of his perfection and as the avatar of God had begun to draw to him his disciples, calling on them in their hearts where he eternally dwells to awaken for now was the time again for service. So masters, I mean, they're, they're, is he talking about the Sahavas? I think he is, the 1956 Sahavas. Uh, because he's saying 28 years since the establishment of his perfection. Is that, is that 1928? Those of, you, those of you with better date knowledge, I am date poor. I'm, no, 28 I'm memory years poor. Since the 28 years since the establishment of his perfection. It is in 1950s. No, no, that's perfection announcement of his. No, no, announcement ah, was 1950s. I think he's referring to coming due, coming down to human form after, I mean, coming down to full human consciousness. So I think that's what he's referring to. Because as, again, going back to the, uh, the facts in, in this book, the book itself came out in uh, 1950s, right? So it's not, yeah. So he's talking about 28 years. Uh, I think after uh, the kiss and after the two years after that. So what are the, what's the deadline on that? 
after Hazrat Barajan and uh, coming down to full human consciousness? Uh, it is around 1924, I think. 23, 24. 24. So 1952, then 28. Okay. Okay, we'll continue a little bit. Maybe able to tell properly. Let me just mark this so we can look it up later. And Kama, if you know more, please jump in. Moon night and Sunday, sleep time and waking, seclusion of unconsciousness and coming forth again to loves and hopes. But the saints reverse this. Day is separation and night the time of love. The tears of the day are the pearls of men's dreams. The size of the night is the saint's road to God. And God too has a night and a day. A night of beyond the beyond. A day of creation and sustaining and destroying what he creates. Again, very beautiful passage about uh, the day in the sense of a master or a saint and the day for the rest of us and the day for God. So God too has a night and a day. The night is of the beyond the beyond and the day is of creation, sustain, sustenance and destruction. All three happen in the day. On Kailasa, Shiva endlessly enjoys his existence, knowledge, bliss. At Chidambaram, he dances the world into being and gloriously sustains it. And in the burning grounds fired by Agni Hephaestus, he destroys it. The act of creation presumes the preservation of what is created. Handle thy fragile pot carefully, O potter, and do not spill ink. On your precious poem, poet, the act of preserving assumes destruction. God alone knows what I'm trying to say. Read God speaks on that. So he's talking about the three aspects of uh, Shiva. It's three aspects of uh, creator, sustainer, and uh, destro uh, destroyer, and in that, he says, beyond the beyond is Kailasha. Chidambaram is uh, uh, sustenance, which is the dance. And in the burning ground, grounds, he is, uh, he is he's basically destroying it. Then he continues, the act of creation yeah. presumes mm -hmm. the... Uh, Chidambaram refers to space, actually, in uh, the five elements. Uh, and that is the first one. If we juxtapose this with what Baba has told, everything starts with the ultra gaseous stage and then becomes later denser and denser. So maybe he refers to that. I somehow link these two things. Chidambaram. Agni is actually, uh, uh, there are five places of Shiva, which represents the five elements, uh, all the five elements. So Agni is, uh, um, uh, what the, I don't get the name, uh, the Hilak. Thiruvannamalai. Thiruvannamalai, yes, yes. Yeah, so actually, I think that may be a little, stretch but interesting thought from your side uh so the the pancha linga shetras is what you're referring to there are yes, five yes. elements there are five elements and then the five elements have their own temple references all of them uh shiva and uh in fact it's a nice story uh it's a it's a very beautiful uh uh um, you know how the element is actually visible and experienced in each of these temples. So if you go to uh, Chidambaram, uh, as uh, Mamaji said, it represents space, actually ether. And, uh, and uh, in, in, in uh, if you go to 
Chidambaram, the actual deity is his space. Mm. So it's a little known fact because people miss the miss the plot. Uh, everybody mm-hmm. focuses on the Utsava Murti. Utsava Murti is the one that's the mobile aspect of the god, which which will be taken out and usually in metal, and not the uh, the, the the main deity in the sanctum sanctorum, which is actually uh, consecrated and fixed to the ground. That's called the Mulava Mula Murti, and then there's the Utsava Murti, which is the one taken out in. Uh, ceremonial uh, processions. So, Utsava for that. Now, what happens in Chidambaram is, the, 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 everybody thinks the main uh, focus of the pilgrimage is the dancing Shiva. This is a very large, very beautiful uh, dancing bronze. But that bronze is the Utsava. The actual main deity is nothing. So, there's actually, a, there is a Bilva, uh, uh, made of uh, bilva is an offering to uh, Lord Shiva, the leaves of the bilva tree. So a mala made of bilva is hanging from the ceiling, from the ceiling of the next room where the uh, dancing Shiva is, and it's just hanging to nothing. So if you notice carefully, the priest will do the arti on the main, uh, I mean the dancing Shiva, and then rush you to the side. I mean, he'll just go to the side, pull pull, pull a, a screen aside and also point out to that mala which is hanging. Everybody misses this. But it's a very deeply symbolic uh, 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 idea, right? So you're basically going there to see Shiva in the form of ether. And, and in the same way, for each of the elements, water, fire, uh, wood, help me here, water, fire, earth, uh, ether and one more. Uh, yeah, yeah, Kanji, yeah, 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 yeah. Kanjipuram, uh, Tiruvellikeni, water. Kanjipuram uh, is what? Earth. Kanjipuram is ah, earth. Kanjipuram is uh, earth. Yeah, earth. And then there's water in Tiruvellikeni. And interestingly, the the most times of the day, any time of the year, the lingam is inundated in water. That particular yes. temple, right? Yes. So then you have uh, earth, water. Uh, anyway, I don't want to uh, go go too far. Those interested can look this up. But uh, uh, interesting uh, connection that Mamaji is making between Chidambaram and uh, 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 world you know, ether me. and space. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. correct. But it's a very, very inspirational uh, form of Shiva, the dancing Shiva. It has inspired Westerners. It has inspired uh, spiritual thought, and it's inspired a book. You, uh, in fact, uh, there's a reference in the index to it, right? The Ananda Kumaraswamy has written a famous book. Uh, he's a Boston historian uh, called um, the Dance of Shiva. Right. Shiva. So it's a very, very yeah, yeah, it's a very, very important idea in Hindu Hindu uh, spirituality. I would say. spirituality and Hindu theology both. So it's a very powerful uh, idea. Yeah. Okay. Anything else before we can continue? Yeah. And he ends by saying, "Let's go to God speaks." Right. So uh, l- let me read that second part. The act of creation presumes the preservation of what is created. Handle thy fragile pot carefully, O potter, and do not spill ink on your precious poem, poet. So don't destroy what you're creating, preserve it, and then then destroy it. The act of preserving, preserving assumes destruction. God alone knows what I'm trying to say. Read God speaks on that. So I think uh, God Speaks covers this beautifully, right? This act of uh, uh, all the three acts being linked. And the fact that one happens means the other has to naturally happen. The act of creation assumes preservation. The act of preservation assumes the eventual destruction. And hence, they're they're there in simultaneous, uh, 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 you know, they are simultaneously acting all the time. And in fact, we also uh, another dimension of understanding this is 
the the it's it's happening every time every second every minute all three actions right we we go through that simultaneously one Any, of the other thoughts yeah. one of the board park sessions explains this very well he very very, very good then say it yeah that's a god speaks video on what parks uh, i mean yes. by what parks yes agree i i remember that too okay god alone knows what any of us are trying to say his dance has brought confusion upon us we are intoxicated by the movement of it would that we were drunk by his beauty then would our hearts be chidambaram and the burning ground of our desires shiva baba shiva baba we have caught a ray from your eyes light send fire to burn out burn out the dead stump of our life's tree if we are not willing to be consumed by your love how can we lay down our lives for you and read this again it's a very beautiful para god alone knows what any of us are trying to say his dance has brought confusion upon us we are intoxicated by the movement of it would that we were drunk by his beauty then would our hearts be chidambaram and the burning ground of our desires shiva baba shiva baba we have caught a ray from your eyes light send fire to burn out the dead stump of our life stream if we are not willing to be consumed by your love how can we lay down our lives for you very very nice so i think uh, 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 the wording uh, uh, if we are not willing to be consumed by your love and just above that is to burn so we yeah. need to be burned with the uh, love so he has to consume us by burning our uh, dead stump of our life tree yeah. yeah so what's uh, what's reminiscent or what's very closely analogically relevant is uh, the sufi reference to the moth the moth and the light right the moth will get completely destroyed in the light that's only burn uh, i mean the moth gets destroyed or burn in the light but it's it moves uh by its attraction to the light and gets destroyed by it okay let's continue yes. we are trapped in a nine gated house surrounded by bush fires across the valley on the shore of the lake is the city of spirit crowned by my father's mansion towering in grandeur beyond this is kailasa itself where my ineffable lord baba has his home yet yet he wandereth the city streets peering in every doorway looking for me nay fool look he subdueth the fires on the hillside around my wretched shack with the water of his tears he quenches a pathway for my feet beautiful beautiful expressions and i think uh, what parks talks about the nine gated house and that's a reference to the nine orifices that the human body has the eyes ears the nine openings that uh, uh, the human body has and i think i remember he refers to this phrase so that's coming up now and then across the valley on the shore is the city of spirit so we are we, we are lost in this simple nine gated house but actually there's a the idea of the spirit which is far more important and in, interesting and that's the father's mansion i mean it's next to the father's mansion uh, and beyond that is kailasa itself where my ineffable ineffable lord baba has his home yet yet he's looking in every city street trying to look for me 
and he's subduing the fire around my wretched shack around this nine gated house which is a wretched shack with the water of his tears he quenches a pathway for my feet so he makes my path through the compassion of his tears he quenches quenches that i continue most copious are his tears uh, the tears that uh, uh, yeah this nine gated uh, uh, reference there is one story uh, in the hindu philosophy uh, i don't know linked to which one any purana or something where they have the same almost similar uh, imagery to uh, picture the whole body and then the desires and how we uh, are immersed in that and we need to come out of that with a, a nice story uh, i am not getting the details of that it's a big uh, story uh, so explaining all different aspects of the human body and our desires and uh, aspirations and then how do you come out of that so that comes to my memory here interesting if you find if you find uh, the the references to it or find the story share on the text yeah. yes yes yeah so i'll continue most copious are his tears the tears of each one who weeps ganga herself falling from heaven and coursing down his cheeks and filling the five oceans a man of sorrows it is his sigh that fills the reed flute of each heart causing the sweet music of lips and eyes and children's dancing krishna jesus baba where your feet have trod on this earth and the plains through heaven plant thou my feet and bring me home but not before your work is done so again ganga uh, ganga herself falling from heaven and coursing down his cheeks so the imagery he uses here is baba being shiva and then uh, the the water of uh, ganga going down from his locks you know in a subdued manner and filling the five oceans he is a man of sorrows because he's carrying so much of pain it is his sigh that fills the reed flute of each heart then he goes to the krishna krishna avatar that fills the reed flute of each heart causing the sweet music of lips and eyes and children's dancing krishna jesus baba where your feet have trod on this earth and the plains through heaven plant thou my feet and bring me home but not before your work is done so that's and i th- i think the last line plant thou my feet and bring me home but not before your work is done so there's a temptation or there's a uh, uh, a greedy statement from francis saying hey don't finish my work till you are there i surely want to be around when you are around so but not before your work is done so don't don't take me home don't let me go to kailasa when you're still around because i love i love to be around you right moon night and sunday and a night and a day has god as avatar night of light and bliss in withdrawal day of descent in which nights and days alternate in seclusion an activity bab baba's first seclusion was for 9 months after baba jan had unveiled it the world was not only he was as in his beyond beyond but in that he had slept but now he was awake he was awake but he worked not because there was nowhere in which to work so the world was not there when baba uh, got 
got unveiled and only he existed in his beyond beyond state and he, in that first few months he had slept but now he was awake and he's awake and working but he's bringing some poetry here po- poetic uh, uh, expression here but he worked not somebody needs to mute the mic but he worked not because there was nowhere in which to work because what what how can you limit the god to somewhere so he was awake but he worked not because there was nowhere in which to work after maharaj had brought him down and told him you are the avatar he secluded himself again this time for work of calling his disciples renewing their loves for him picking them for the field of the world for the next 28 years he alternated work in seclusion and work in action seclusion at mehrabad mehrazad angiras hill from which he emerged drawn and haggard and told a disciple that three quarters of the world would be destroyed and many other places so what is angiras hill said the panchavati cave it's a new name not able to connect right angiras hill let's see what that is but then he comes out tired and tells a disciple that three quarter of the world would be destroyed okay jay baba i think that um, if i am not mistaken uh, there was a time i think in the 1940s somewhere near raipur um where baba secluded himself in this hill and um, and i came um, thing i don't know for how long probably in lord meher if you put angiras hill uh, you'll be able to get okay. uh, much more details but it's one of his seclusion periods which was an important uh, probably during world war 2 if i'm not uh, incorrect okay bab so before or around 1945 between 1939 and 45 okay baba now entered his great seclusion of 40 days curtain between two acts of old life and new life curtain of author actor writing into the original sketch plan the detailed parts of the next act the 40 days divided into 9 days during which 21 poor and 7 men were brought to him 9 days during which the work to be done was done fasting all the time no one knows except myself and god what i went through during those 9 days so this is before between the old life and the new life Six days of partial relaxation and some solid food taken. Shift of residence in closed car to Pune for nine days, and work with musts. His men scouring the roads and bringing them to him, and back at Mehrazad for the final seven days. The old life act finished, and established in potentiality. of being in the hearts of the audience the supreme actor god himself lord baba stepped lightly and radiantly onto the stage for the next act of utter helplessness and hopelessness that's the expression baba used for the new life the great seclusion was from 22nd june to 31st july 49 on august 15th baba called the disciples together and told them of the new life he was beginning on october 16th a life of homeless helplessness on the roads and invited whom so would follow him warning them to consider it carefully 
there would be no return and himself helpless to help them. For now, he who had been greatest would become least. He who had been the highest of the high would be the lowest of all. Those who went with him were to consider themselves already as the dead, who have no further connection with the living and ask no more questions and need no provisions for their journey. They must disburden themselves of all fads and religious beliefs and have no expectations whatsoever of reward. Be willing to die causeless and without reason as a noble tree in the forest lives without connection or question and is already dead without reason of its own, being marked out by a pitiless axeman. So a woodcutter can kill a tree without a reason and without pity from his side. Uh, the disciples that were picked for joining him on the journey were to think like that tree and be ready to be dropping their bodies causeless and without reason. Beautiful uh, expression of uh, uh, what happened in that period. Then Baba had four of the disciples read from the four Bibles, Avesta, Gita, New Testament, and the Quran. And as each reading was finished, he took the scripture in his hands and laid it on a table and told one to pray thus. May God help Baba to definitely make the step which he's taking to give up everything and go away irrevocable so that from October 16, when he enters the new life, there will be no turning back. And some were amazed that he prayed to God for never before had he done this, but had always said he was the same as God. Perfect, as are all perfect masters perfect. And each believed this both from his presence and from his acts with others, and their faith was not shaken. Even those who had been with him since, he had become perfect and established as avatar by the perfect fire. But none thought to say, nor dared, if he had thought of it, say Amen. So nobody brought it up to him, though they observed that he prayed. He had become perfect and established as avatar by the perfect five, but none thought to say, nor dared, if he had thought of it, say Amen. Nor would the hardships of the roads of the must trips, the foot slogging and bullock cart sufferance of endless days and miles be their hardships. But the labor, the solid labor of controlling their every feeling and emotion, not, not feeling, but controlling feeling, catching it in its bud before it burst into expression. Sadhana of Mahasadhakas, Yoga of Mahayogis, Maha Arjunas of Kurukshetra, of victory of no reward. No hope for love for their love. So he is describing the journey here, their hardships, the bullet cuts, bullet cut sufferings, endless days and miles. But the labor, the solid labor of controlling their every feeling and emotion, not, not feeling, but controlling feeling. So you cannot avoid feeling, but he's saying, you have to control that feeling, catching it in its bud before it bursts into expression. So catch the feeling from uh, giving it more energy to actually burst into expression. This, he says, is like sadhana of Mahasadakas, yoga of the Mahayogis, Maha Arjunas of Kurukshetra, of victory of no reward. That is, do. Go for 
the result, but don't look for the reward. So it's of victory, but he's going towards victory. Mahajunas of Kurukshetra of victory, but don't focus on the reward. No hope and just look for love, for dear love. Any other ways to understand this? Any other ways to interpret this? Please uh, jump in. No, I'm not really thinking this. I can clearly think that. Yeah. Anybody else? What's your question? No, no, no. Any other way of interpreting this last stanza? And Mama then said he needs help. So I thought I'll check with you. Check with any other interpretation, any other people. I think it's just well, uh, the the description of the, those days of suffering and the fact of uh, how they abided by or, or obeyed Baba completely on his demands of being away from healing and away from uh, any help at all. And then he's comparing it to sadhana of the sadhakas and the yogis and even uh, Arjuna. That's what I take away from it. Go ahead, Kama. Yeah, I think you're right. Basically, it just describes the new life. What kind of hardships and uh, the rules. If you have read the new life, there were many circulars and uh, also... Baba had given particular instructions as to the behavior of all the people joining him in the new life. So I think this describes what were the different kinds of experiences they had. And as you rightly said, which is uh, equivalent to what uh, individuals, uh, you know, advanced spiritual aspirants go in their sadhana. But here uh, you're talking about a time period where Baba was leading the, uh, you know, the mandali, the selected 20 mandali with them, both men and women during the new life. Uh, of course, he was doing a lot of inner work during this period for the future of the uh, globe. And then um, the second uh, paragraph uh, describes about uh, uh, you know, the process that happened uh, uh, when the new life was uh, discussed and, uh, you know, when it started in 1949. And previously you had read about Baba going through seclusion. So just before the new life between June and July, Baba went on this 40-day seclusion in Merazad, actually. Yeah. So it's just a description of... Uh, uh, you know, the experiences of the people involved in the new life. Yeah. Hey, Baba. Okay. So the last stanza before we finish another section. Yet, would he still require of them obedience? I will live among you as your brother. I may even fall at your feet or ask you to spit on me. That is why it will be very hard for you. I think these lines in quotation marks are from the circular. He told them. Then he disbanded his ashrams and with what money came to him, provided for families dependent on him. And when the glorious morning of their going dawned, they set forth gloriously and they sang a new song, the song of the new life. Right. Uh, Jay Baba, uh, here I yes. have a quote, a circular, a new life circular 17, 17 issued uh, 11th uh, September 1915. Um, and this is a description which probably you would have read. Uh, it's called the new life. Uh, the new life is endless. And even after my physical death, it will be kept alive by those who live the life of complete renunciation 
of falsehood, lies, hatred, anger, greed, and lust. And who to accomplish all this do no lustful actions, do no harm to anyone, do no backbiting, do not seek material possessions or power, who accept no homage, neither covet honor nor shun disgrace, and fear no one and nothing. By those who rely wholly and solely on God and who love God purely for the sake of loving, who believe in the lovers of God and in the reality of manifestation, and yet do not expect any spiritual or material reward, who do not let go the hand of truth, and who, without being upset by calamities, bravely and wholeheartedly face all hardships with 100% with cheerfulness and give no importance to caste, creed, and religious ceremonies. This new life will live by itself eternally, even if there is no one to live it. Meher Baba, Circular New Life 17, issued 11, 9, 1950. So it kind of summarizes uh, what I understood is this, what I just read, uh, the circular is a summary of what the new life is, not only what Baba and the Mandali went through, but for all of us, because of the current situation that we are facing, you know, especially with the pandemic and the war and so on, and then you also mentioned about in the Angiras Hill, Baba talking about three fourths of the world being destroyed, uh, which probably we should not take literally, but maybe it has a spiritual meaning to it, or maybe it has some other connotation. But the new life, uh, I think uh, one of the reasons uh, the new life that was uh, what Baba underwent is an example for all of us how our life could be going forward in the future. Jai Baba. Yeah, that's one dimension. The other dimension is the new life is the life that uh, uh, life that Baba wants us to live irrespective of the environment, right? So you're making a reference rather rightfully. I'm not questioning what you're saying. I'm just bringing out another dimension of the new life, right? The new life is where you shed all the, uh, the the material things and focus on the changes that you need to focus on and leave that leave that life irrespective of the context around you right so so it's a symbolic way of representing what humanity needs to do right so that's one way of my my personal interpretation i may be wrong no you're you're right i mean that's uh, that's what uh... I think the new life, uh, uh, yeah, because what we have seen with avatars is they actually set an example for the future. Yeah. I mean, all of the Baba activities that we have seen in his uh, biography, in his lifetime, uh, washing the lepers, bringing the East and West together, uh, bringing women's emancipation, uh, having the Prem Ashram school with boys from different religious systems and so on and so forth is clearly an indication what we have seen, uh, what's going on uh, in our current economy and all that. But in the end, uh, as you said, uh, the whole idea is that uh, uh, he says, who do not let go the hand of truth and who without being upset by calamities, bravely and wholeheartedly face all hardships with 100% with cheerfulness and give no importance to caste, creed and religious ceremonies. It's almost like the seven realities, you know, which is being said in a different way. Jai Baba. Uh, one point is, uh, when we call this as a new life, we had already having a life, but then jumping into another phase of life, new life. So in one way, I feel those who are uh, in the path, at some point of time, realize that they have to give up everything. So the first part is always be aware that you need to give up. You need to give up and try to give up as much as possible. 
but at one point after some struggle you ultimately give give up everything all this crossness and all these things and then go for uh, uh, actual spiritual journey as such so that is why it is known as uh, new life so it is uh, giving up the existing life and then going forward in a different way so this also refers to some uh, way the different ashramas which are explained in exactly. our class today also hey baba good point uh, good point so va prastha uh, yeah go ahead this anyasa yeah uh, i think that uh, what uh, mama dr mama was saying that uh, is basically the new life is not different from what others have experienced in the past 5000 10000 years in terms of uh, self realization uh, what you call as rod renunciation of desires or sow and state of wanting nothing that's what this whole uh, you know it's just a terminology the new life but uh, technically the whole process of self realization is about renunciation of desires right che yes, baba yes yes okay so let me continue uh, this is the new section now one was sanyas satyanash exile renunciation ruin this is the end of my beginning and the beginning of my end the pilgrim road led on to the conquest of that which is but was not is but never was anything at all led on to the destruction of mind mother of illusion and delusion of hopes and fears and attachments and separations and thirst spinner of coins of gain and loss maker of art and bad art but god has his own thirst which leads him in the divinity to himself so he's talking about uh, the vanavas sanyas and satyanash exile renunciation and ruin the pilgrim road led on to the conquest of that which is what was not but never was anything at all so it's we are following i mean it's the classic uh, false values right so we are gripping false values and struggling on things that are never real and from what leads to the destruction of mind which he says is mother of illusion and delusion of hopes and fears and attachments and separations and thirst spinner of coins of gain and loss is is describing the mind here maker of art and bad art and bad art is again so a theme that francis loves we know he he says art is supposed to be divine or it's bad art but god has his own thirst which leads him in the divinity to himself so beautiful expression again but god has his own thirst god is in everybody and that god in everybody leads himself through his own thirst to discover himself to to become god so that's the journey the perfect uh, in master the, in yeah. the first line aha uh-huh. uh, what is uh, satyanas any idea by anyone vanvas is exile sanyas is renunciation satyanas ruin ruin of what false values probably, and the mind maybe yeah pano nash probably annihilation of the yeah. mind yeah yeah yes yes probably okay yeah yeah thank you most likely perfect masters enact their roles 
avatar becomes the part he plays for our unveiling just as in a play well put together for our enlightenment a real play concerning some episode in the life of an avatar an actor is a carpenter and is making a table and acts his part perfectly or another actor for the duration of the play becomes and does not know himself as other than a carpenter so baba became helpless and prayed to god to help him and with god's help annihilated his mind the reference to baba as a carpenter i think there's reference to jesus as a carpenter right that's, that's a famous theme that uh, some christian traditions use I've heard it not much, but uh, if anybody knows, we can talk about it. Anyway, we'll continue. And when mind was gone, his old life of knowledge, strength, and greatness abided. But he kept also, by his own act, act of keeping, the ignorance, weakness, and humility of the new life. then was he himself and us at the same time and so there arose in him life free and obligationless the life of master and servant of knowledge that we are all eternally one indivisible and infinite in essence but separate through ignorance life of strength in knowledge and weakness in binding desires It's talking of baba here and this led to the tripartite life of complicated free life in which bindings dominated freedom the full free life in which freedom dominated bindings the fiery free life wherein both freedom and bindings were consumed in the fire of divine love now was there a complete blending of god state and man state in which the one lived not in opposition to the other neither did one encroach upon the province of the other and the divine truth of his realization he shared with those who sought it so he describes there is breaking we are not able to hear you clearly no still back or is it just you can somebody else also okay. Now yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah 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 uh, there was a disturbance now no better yeah no better okay thank you uh, can uh, you go back to the first line of the previous stanza and when mind was gone here uh, uh, yeah and when mind was gone his old life of knowledge strength and greatness abided but uh, here, he uh, kept yeah go uh, ahead this uh, this reference knowledge strength and greatness uh mm-hmm. does it refer to greatness refers to bliss is it power mm. is it and knowledge power and bliss we always use so he is using different terminology here knowledge strength and greatness well he is just writing the you know i mean uh, because it's more like a poetic form of describing the license uh, so i don't think you need to read it is uh, mentioned here yeah. highest of the high ah. okay yeah but i think uh, the key thing is in these three paragraphs he is talking about the perfect master becomes the part he is coming down to the level of the uh, pilgrim 
but he does not lose his his uh, knowledge strength and greatness but he keeps it keeps it in abeyance it's there it's abiding in him abiding. but he beca- becomes uh, uh, he comes down to our li- life and lives the life of master and servant like he says and then the three aspects of the complicated free life the full free life and the theory free life and the the blending of god state and man state which is what uh, he brings out in this para let's continue oh says my fool if bindings dominated freedom how could it be a free life if freedom dominated bindings bindings still trailing freedom would not be free listen and see fool Paul is not Paul. Uh, he may allow. Okay, I'm doing differently. Maybe something of the tail on my side. Just give me a second. Let me switch channels. Okay, maybe uh, my problem of uh, low strength. I'm back. Is it better now? I just moved yes, to yes, mobile yes. Uh, internet. Okay, maybe the. wired one is having trouble let me do mobile for the next few minutes yeah. so uh he he may uh, exert it from the beginning i think ho oh. sure ho oh. say is my fool if bindings dominated freedom how could it be a free life if freedom dominated bindings bindings still trailing freedom would not be free listen sweet fool god is not false he may allow bindings to bind him but he is not bound he may exert freedom over binding but that is not his freedom he wears loosely both freedom and binding his bondage in us is our deliverance in him and our binding in him our freedom from ourselves so this is uh, very very nice expression this yes yes going back to what he is describing here and then how he links that to uh, our own, own life journeys and where we are uh, uh, and our relationship with uh, him he wears loosely both freedom and binding his bondage in us is our deliverance in him and our binding our binding in him our freedom from ourselves so he brings the link between the freedom and binding now he could again say that he was the ancient one the highest of the high and in dehradun in 53 on the anniversary of his birth as zarathustra he said consciously or unconsciously directly or indirectly every person and every creature strives to assert individuality when but when at last a man experiences himself as being infinite eternal and indivisible he is conscious of his individuality as god to worship such a man is to worship god it's a reference to the highest of the high message and i think uh is a very very important message here consciously or unconsciously directly or indirectly every person and every creature strives to assert individuality the pet theme of baba of individualization right the individualized soul but when at last a man experiences himself as being infinite eternal and indivisible he is conscious of his individuality as god continuing that theme so even as god there is a individual aspect to worship such a man is to worship god so i continue when god manifests And, uh, this also uh we had read that uh, on say realization 
the drop joins the ocean and still maintains individuality. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's that's yes, exactly yes. what I'm saying. Yes, so the yes, two yes, individualities, yes. the two individuality that he says here yeah. are very, very important. Yes. Right. So individuality as God. And assert individuality, which is individualization. So, I mean, discourses uses this a lot, right? The first part of the uh, first few chapters talk about individualization, right? And uh, individualized soul. And then uh, in God Speaks and uh, further books, we found that even after you get uh, the experiences of being infinite, eternal, and indivisible, there is an individualized God or the, the individualization is intact even in God state, which is something that we have picked up and are kind of confirming and piecing together from multiple books. Good catch. I'll stop with this last Jay paragraph. Baba. Yeah, go ahead, Kama. Jay Baba. Yeah, I think that um, what you were just speaking about, the individuality, which is basically the drop soul, which is part of the oversoul, the Atma or Jivatma, which becomes Shivatma, which is, I think the Shivatma is what the individuality has got. Uh, in page 156 in God Speaks, uh, just two paragraphs which I'll read. Sure. The, eternal, the eternal reality is that Paramatma or the Oversoul is Atma or the Soul. And this reality is realized only when the impression consciousness as Jivatma becomes the impressionless or unimpressioned consciousness as Shivatma, merging in Paramatma to assert and realize the identity of Paramatma. If in reality, Atma is Paramatma, how then could any situation arise for Atma to merge in Paramatma? In order to clarify this situation and understand that Paramatma is Atma in reality, we compare Paramatma with an infinite, limitless and shoreless ocean. Therefore, Atma, which is Paramatma, can never be out of bounds of the limitless and shoreless ocean that is Paramatma. Atma can never be out of Paramatma because Paramatma, which we have compared to the limitless and shoreless ocean, is infinite and unlimited. How could Atma come out of or have a place beyond the expanse of the limitless when Atma is Paramatma? Hence, Atma is in Paramatma too. And then it goes on to describe the iota of ocean, you know, iota from the ocean, which is the Atma. And uh, when it gets separated by the bubble of ignorance, which is the whim, who am I? And then you know the whole story about the divine theme. Jai Baba. Jai Baba. Thank you. I, I think this, uh, this what I'm reading is an older edition, you know, page 156. Uh, it's from the yeah. first edition of Fix. Okay, sorry. Yeah, about that. yeah. yeah. <laughs> No problem. All right, so we'll just finish this one para and end on page 47 being completed. When God manifests himself as a man directly, he is known as Avatar. He is the salvation of all men and the help of all creatures. Age after age, infinite God wills through his infinite mercy, his presence among mankind by stooping down to human level in human form. But his glory being covered, he is looked upon as being merely a man. But when his time of divine assertion comes, he is worshipped by some who accept him, glorified by a few who know him, but the rest condemn him. So that is that is about the avatar. We continue from this point uh, 
next Saturday. Uh, meanwhile, uh, any other confirmations for uh, Silence Day? I'm I'm making it. Kama is. I saw your email, Kama. I, I saw it much later. So I'm there from ninth midday to twelfth evening. So that's my plan. Yes, so we'll see you then, Mamaji. Most likely, Mamaji. He has his bookings, but then he's being very enigmatic. He's saying <laughs> some other competing <laughs> priorities. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. Okay. Travel to Europe is uh, a smaller thing than traveling to uh, Ahmed, Ahmed, Ahmed Nagar. Mehrabad, yes, Mehrabad. indeed. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> Sanjay ji, are you there? Are you going to be there? Because I think you asked this question a few times a few weeks back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Baba Billing, yes. Great. Great. I'm yet to write. I'll, I'll write to them today. Yeah. Yeah, I wrote uh, yesterday and got a confirmation as well. Okay. So okay. I'll, it I'll might, be, it might be crowded, so don't delay. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll do that uh, just after the call. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, Jai Baba. Jai Baba. And uh, I didn't ask, uh, ask because uh, I know they are traveling at that time and they are not traveling to Ahmedabad. I think your voice was breaking. Couldn't hear you. No, no. I said I did. I did not ask the dhars because I knew <laughs> of their travel plans. Uh, yeah. They are elsewhere at that time, but uh, soon we will catch up. Yeah. How about Ashok? Ashok Ji? Ashok is in the USA. US. Okay, he's already in the US. Okay. In the US. okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll influence Soma to make it. Yeah. Okay. Jai Baba. Jai Baba. Jai Baba. Jai Baba.